In digestion, large food molecules are broken down into small food molecules by enzymes. Use this information to complete the table. Okay, we have a list of large molecules, the enzyme involved, and we're looking for the small food molecule produced. Right, remember with starch, starch is broken down by amylase into glucose, so you need to write that in the right-hand column. The next enzyme we've been given is protease. It's kind of in the name. The large food molecule protease breaks down this protein, and the small food molecule produced is amino acids. Lastly, we've been given the large food molecule, which is lipid, that is broken down by lipase into fatty acids and glycerol. B. The small food molecules can be absorbed into the blood by villi in the small intestine. Give three ways in which the villi are adapted to absorb small food molecules. Right, so remember, first of all, they have a very large surface area due to the presence of microvilli. They are very thin, which means that there's a very short diffusion distance, and they have a plentiful supply of blood capillaries. Um, and really, that's all I would write for that question. The diagram shows the human digestive system. A. Use letters from the diagram to answer these questions. Each answer may be one letter or more than one letter. That's nice of you at Excel. How kind. I. Where is amylase made? Right. I. I mean part one. How stupid am I? Right. Remember that amylase is made in the salivary glands and it's also made in the pancreas. So this question requires you both to know that and then be able to recognise it on the diagram. So salivary glands are in the mouth. So that's A. And then the pancreas is the little vine leaf-shaped structure, which is G. So you need to write A and G there. Part two, where are faeces stored? Well, that's the rectum. What is the rectum on this diagram? Well, it's D, because remember, E is the anus, where the faeces leave the body. Three, where is protein digested? Right, proteins are digested in both the stomach and the small intestine. So you're looking for the sac stomach, which is B, the small intestine, which is F. So you need to write B and F there. These questions are mean. B. Describe and explain how the structure of the small intestine is adapted for absorbing digested food. Five marks. So you need to make five separate points. Point out the obvious ones first of all. Things like that it is long, that it has thin walls, and then if you can remember, try and add the fact that it has villi, and the purpose of the villi is to increase the surface area for um, the absorption of food. You want to say it has a good blood supply in the form of capillaries, and what they do is they maintain the concentration gradient in order to allow the diffusion of food across the walls of the small intestine. And if you're feeling super fancy, write the fact that they have lacteals. But personally, I wouldn't even remember to write that. I would write first mark that it's long, second mark that it has thin walls, third mark villi, fourth mark increases surface area, fifth mark for the diffusion of food particles, and I think that is more than enough personally. A balanced diet is important to maintain good health. Suggest the consequences of having a diet that lacks fresh fruit and fibre. Right, split your answer into two because it's two marks. So the lack of fresh fruit, you could say lack of vitamin C would lead to scurvy. And then if you have a lack of fibre, then that will lead to constipation. Part two, suggest the consequences of having a diet that contains too much fat worth three marks. Right, too much fat may lead to obesity. Um, it may also lead to the disease which is diabetes. And then at this point, you could talk about the effect that this has on the body. So you could talk about the fact that there might be high blood pressure or the blockage of arteries leading to heart attack. So anything sensible really here. This is a slightly different type of question. A student wants to investigate the effect of secretions juice from the pancreas on the digestion of protein. The white of an egg is put into 15, 15 millimetre long capillary tubes. The tubes are placed in boiling water for 10 minutes until the egg white becomes solid. The diagram shows one of the tubes filled with solid egg white. That sounds gross. The 15 tubes are put into three groups of five. Five tubes are placed in a beaker of distilled water. Five tubes are placed into a beaker of juice from the pancreas. Five tubes are placed into a beaker of juice from the pancreas that has been boiled. After three hours, the length of the boiled egg white in each tube is measured in millimetres. The results are shown in the table. Right, A, part one. Give the dependent variable in this experiment. Remember, this is the thing that you are measuring. And the thing you are measuring is obviously the length of the boiled egg white. Make sure you write length in order to get the mark. Part 2. Give two reasons why the results obtained by the student are reliable. Remember, if they ask you about reliability, you're going to be talking about repeats. So for your first mark, say that they repeated the experiment. And for the second mark, say that they found no anomalies. And remember, an anomaly is just like an odd one out, caused by some kind of error. Part 3. Suggest how the student can obtain precise measurements of length. Okay, say anything sensible here, like using a ruler. B, part 1. Explain the difference in the results obtained in distilled water compared to juice from the pancreas. Okay, I'm looking at the distilled water, where the length of the boiled egg white stays the same. It's 50 
and the juice from the pancreas where it has decreased rapidly to 14, approximately 14, and we need to explain the difference. So rather than stating what we see, we need to say why. And you need to say that in the distilled water there is no enzyme so that no digestion can take place. Part 2. Explain the difference in the results obtained in pancreas juice compared to boiled juice from the pancreas. Okay, we're again providing an explanation and we can see that the boiled juice from the pancreas, everything stayed at 50. The ju juice from the pancreas, everything has decreased. Why? Well, we're going to have to talk about enzymes at this point because boiling should immediately be flagging up enzyme, enzyme, enzyme. And so what you need to say here is in the boiled pancreas juice that the enzyme has been denatured, so the active site changed shape um, due to the high temperatures involved. C. Suggest how you can modify this investigation to find out the effect of pH on protein digestion by pancreas juice. Right. Gosh, these questions are tricky. Um, use your common sense again. So this time just say a range of different things you could do in order to carry out the experiment. So the first thing you could say is use a range of pH. Definitely don't boil the pancreas juice because we're not interested in temperature here. And it is important that you control the volume of enzyme used and its concentration. So actually I've provided four marks worth there, but I hope this um, talk through of this question in particular was helpful. Primary consumers can digest the starch from plants. Describe how starch is digested in humans. You need to be very specific here. Name the breakdown products and the enzymes involved. So first of all, say that in the mouth for the first mark, um, amylase is released from the salivary glands. Um, amylase is also released from the pancreas, and what amylase does is it breaks down starch into glucose. I think I said that in quite a horrible way. Just say, first of all, that starch is made in both the salivary glands and the pancreas. And then for the second mark, what am I even saying? Dope. Primary consumers can digest the starch from plants. Describe how starch is digested in humans. Right, starch is digested by amylase. Remember, amylase is released from both the salivary glands and the pancreas. And you need to just specify for the third point that starch is broken down into glucose. Boom, done. The table contains names and descriptions of process involved in the digestive system. Complete the table by filling in the missing names and descriptions. You need to be very, very specific and scientific with the name of these processes. FYI, so the first um, description of process is food enters the mouth and you need to write here, this is called ingestion. Right, digestion, what is the description of this process? Well, you need to say here that it's the breakdown of large insoluble molecules into small soluble ones. Okay, our next clue, small food molecules move from the small intestine into the blood, well, this is absorption. Next description, small food molecules are used to build large molecules. Gosh, this is hard, it's assimilation. You need to learn that definition for sure. And then lastly, ingestion. Gosh, they're being so fussy here. What they actually mean is to do with pooing, but obviously you can't write that. So you need to say the removal of feces. And in order to make sure you get the full mark, you need to say the removal of feces from the anus. Oh, B, describe the process of digestion in the mouth. Okay, very similar to what I was just answering. Remember that amylase is produced from the salivary glands. Amylase breaks down starch into glucose. Um, and then remember, although that is chemical digestion, there's another form of digestion occurring in the mouth, which is mechanical digestion or physical digestion due to the teeth chewing. C. A student carried out some food tests on two samples of food, A and B. The table shows the results. Okay, we have sample A. They used iodine solution, so we know we're testing for starch. And we see blue-black, which tells us, yes, starch is present. B. Benedict's. The colour seen after adding the reagent is brick red. Remember, Benedict's tests for glucose. So if brick red is seen, we know that glucose is present. Um, it's really good to always get a feel of what the, where the question's going, so it's less of a shock. The student concluded that both samples of the food contain carbohydrates. Do you agree with this conclusion? Give reasons for your answer. Yes, I do. Why? Because I know that A is starch and B is glucose, and that's all you need to say there. 1. Lipase is an enzyme that digests fat. Complete the equation to show the digestion of fat. Use the correct answer from the box. Fat plus lipase produces fatty acids and glycerol, so you need to circle the middle one. Actually, no, you need to write it in the box, in the dotted lines, what am I saying? Um, part two, name one organ that makes lipase. Okay, you could write here either pancreas or the small intestine. B, some students investigated the effect of bile on the digestion of fat by lipase. The students, one, mixed milk and bile in a beaker. Two, put the pH sensor of pH meter into the beaker. Three, added lipase. Four recorded the pH, five repeated steps one to four but use water instead of bile. Suggest two variables that the students should have controlled in this investigation. Okay, you can pick from many, many options here. You could have said the type of milk, the volume of milk, 
um, the volume of lipase, the concentration of lipase, or the temperature, so lots of things to pick from there. 1C, figure 1 shows the student's results. Right, okay, we can see that the pH has decreased far more rapidly with bile compared with, with water. 1C, part 1, why did the pH decrease in both investigations? Right, what you want to write here is because fatty acids were produced, and remember acids result in a decrease in pH. So just write that for me there. C part 2. Bile helps lipase to digest fat. What evidence is there in figure 1 to support this conclusion? Right, if we look back at figure 1, we can see that there was a faster reaction with bile. And that's all you need to say, nothing more complicated than that. Right, I think this is the last question I'm going to talk through before you all get so bored. Question 1. Some students investigated the effect of pH on the digestion of boiled egg white by an enzyme called pepsin. Egg white contains protein. The students put a glass tube containing boiled egg white into a test tube. They added a solution containing pepsin at pH 7. They set up six more tubes with solutions of pepsin at different pH scales, sorry, pH values, and they left the tubes for 24 hours at room temperature. Right, okay, in um, figure one at the start, we can see it's 50 millimeters long, and then 24 hours later, it has shortened. Name the product of protein digestion. Product is basically just saying what proteins get broken into, and the answer there is amino acids. 1A, part two, what type of enzyme digests protein? Well, that's protease. 1B, the egg white in each tube was 50 millimeters long at the start of the investigation. And then we can see it gets shorter, dependent on the pH. At, we, at which pH did... The pepsin work best. You're looking for the shortest length and the pH which was responsible and we can see the shortest length is 20 so therefore the pH here is 2. Part 2. The answer you gave in B part 1 may not be the exact pH at which pepsin works best. What could the students do to find a more accurate value for this pH? Well first of all they could repeat it and the second thing they could do is use smaller pH intervals between pH 1 and 3 for example. 1B part 3. There was no change in the length of the egg white from pH Five to seven. Why? Well, which what things are really fussy? Well, it's enzymes are super fussy about pH, and so if they're at the incorrect pH, then the enzyme will denature, and will no longer fit into its substrate because the active site has changed shape. One C. Pepsin is made by the stomach. Name the acid made by the stomach, which allows pepsin to work well. Well, that is hydrochloric acid. Right, I am definitely going to stop there. I hope you found these helpful. Let me know if you like these sorts of videos and I'll make more of them and I'll see you very soon.